God rescued them through their thought problems, made them to be powerful in the place that they were. They found favor in the desert. And we find crises in our own life. We find health issues. We find struggles at work, dangers in the community, risks to our children. We see a society that seems to be geared to destroy people as human beings, using them up and throwing them away. And here we are. What shall we do? Shall we retreat? Shall we build a compound and lock ourselves in it to protect ourselves? And we know that there's no escape. We try those things, but it does not work. We're still in the world. But God promises His people that He provides a way to bloom in the desert. To find favor of God, even in these hard circumstances. He says to Israel, God says, I have loved you with everlasting love. Wow. That promise goes out in how many love songs do you hear that have that theme to me? I'll just love you forever, I'll swim across this, I'll do that because I love you so much. And what we find out is people are fickle. <laughs> we make these promises and we try to carry them through, maybe. But we don't because we are so weakly human. And we're suspicious of those things, aren't we? It's hard for us to get our head around that promise from God because we know who we are. Down deep inside, we know who we are, that we make promises and that we don't come through. We, we know we ought to forgive, but we lack the strength to do it. How can God forgive us, we ask, because we have such a hard time forgiving anybody else. It's beyond our understanding. Do we really think that God loves us with an everlasting love that will continue to be steadfast when we're bad? When we're good, it will be good for goodness sake. Do we really believe that? And we have a hard time. We have a hard time believing that God would be faithful because in deep inside us, there's that part of us that says, I want to do it my way, in my time. We are pushing God away. We feel like we can't fully trust. We can't fully risk trusting and depending upon God for fear that He won't come through for us. Especially in a way that we like. We hear promises. Our government's going to take care of us. <coughs> Businesses are going to take care of us. You can trust us. The check is in the mail. Give me one more chance. And we ask ourselves, really? Do we really believe that? However, What choice do we have is truly trusting God? We try independence, even in ourselves, we find that we fail ourselves. We try it our way, and we fall down and hurt. What choice do we have but one who is greater than us that we can depend upon? Really, in the end, what is, what is the choice? See, here's the promise. God promised the Jews, there will come a day when you will say, once again, let's go up to Zion, let's go up to the, the Temple Mount." And worship God there because he's done good things for us. He's made us a way. The Jews are a, a broken hearted people. They are deported. Their culture is in shambles. Their temple has been looted. The educated and skilled of them have been taken away and they have put to work for the Babylonians and not for themselves. Basically slave labor. Their cropping has been ruined. The wells have been stopped up. Their government has been dismantled and destroyed. They don't even have the basics of managing themselves. And no one could imagine that they could ever come back from that. Least of all the Babylonians. They thought they had finished these guys off once and for all. The desert experience is coming for you as well. That's the guarantee we have in this life, that in this world, you will have trouble. Not you maybe have, will have trouble. You will have trouble. Whether it's illness, or it's harm done to you, accidents that go on in your life, struggles that come to you, violent disagreements, heartaches and fears, it's coming. It's coming for you, and it's coming for me. What will we do? God has loved you with everlasting love. Just as he promised the Jews. He's loved us that way. And he has promised us that we'll find redemption, we'll find blessing, we'll find place in the middle of our desert. He does not promise us to take us out of all 
Although you hear a lot of that preaching these days. Preaching that says, if you just serve God right, everything's going to go your way. You'll never be healthy. Uh, you'll never be healthy. Uh, you'll never be ill. You'll never have financial troubles. You'll never have hardship. You'll just serve God right. You've got that relationship right. God, you don't find that in the Bible. That's what I'm saying. You know, he does promise that we'll be blessed right in the middle of our desert. That he'll find place and strength for us. Just as Daniel blossomed as a leader in the harshest of environments, as the three, three friends stood together and lifted up God's name, God is looking for us as well to give us that same blessing, to give us the power to overcome, to give us his favor, even in the middle of a foreign land. So you are called to accept the challenge, to receive it from his hand, to step out in faith and allow him to move in you, to honor him with your life, to have the courage to obey him even when everybody else disobeys and makes fun of you for doing it, the courage to speak God's word when the world will look at you and say, that's wrong, mm. So foolish, everything's going to be okay if you just go along. You will be called narrow-minded, bigoted, hateful, angry, hurtful, any number of things. You will be called a person who wastes their time when you give your energy, your finances, your strength to the church. Jeremiah, the 31, and verse 4. I will build you up again, and you will be rebuilt, virgin Israel. Again you will take up your tambourines and go out to dance with the joyful. And this is the promise that God made to us as well. In the middle of our hard times, he'll give us power to overcome and live to be. Jesus was born to lead us heart and soul back to God, face to face. We have to go along. We just have to start with our Christian life and build on it. Trusting that God will guide and give us the power and the strength. God has given us this church, this universal church and local church, a place of imperfect people with an imperfect life who are seeking the perfect one. It's his life. Let's let it move. As we stand together and say,